Good morning, everyone. My name is Lauren. I'm here live at the Essex Kitchen at the historic Essex Market, and this is our Fresh Bites at Home series. Today, we're going to be making one of my favorite summer recipes. This is a green bean and corn stir fry. If you want to see subtitles on the YouTube recording of this class, click the settings icon on the bottom right corner. Then click Subtitles, English Auto Generated, click Subtitles again, then Auto Translate, and select your language. So we're going to prep a few things here on my board, and then we're going to go over to my stove and I'm going to show you how I actually cook this off. So green beans and corn are two things that are, you know, in the height of its growing season right now. Corn in the summertime is going to be super sweet and flavorful and also really inexpensive. You can usually find it for 50 cents or a dollar per ear. And our green beans, it's so funny because I often see recipes around Thanksgiving or Christmas time that call for green beans, but these are other things that grow in the summer. And so again, right now is when they're going to be the least expensive and um, the most flavorful and nutritious. Green beans here at Essex are selling for around $2.99 a pound, and we need just shy of two pounds for this recipe. So when we're working with our green beans, they often come with the stem portion of the green bean still attached. That's just this hard part at the top, and I like to go through and individually pick off all those stems. You could, of course, you know, line them up and cut off the tops of each one as well. Um, but I usually go through and pick them off one by one. And then we're gonna wanna cut our green beans into small pieces. I'm gonna take my knife and just simply cut them into a few pieces like this, very easy. So I've done that already with um, about one and a half, almost two pounds of our green beans. We're looking for around four cups of cut green beans. And if you did make this recipe later in the fall or the winter, green beans and corn are actually uh, still really good frozen. So this is a recipe you can keep in the back of your mind for later on too. So we'll put those to the side and then we'll talk about our corn. So I've already taken off the husk of our corn and I wanna show you um, a trick I learned a couple years ago for a really easy way to get the kernels off the cob. So what I like to do is take uh, some sort of large bowl and then a smaller bowl that can fit upside down in the bottom of our glass bowl. So again, I have that small bowl, bowl that's resting on the bottom of our big glass bowl. And then I'm using that to rest the bottom of our ear of corn on top there. And then I can easily run my knife down the side of our corn. And what's nice about this is I can easily get all the way to the bottom of our cob and all of our kernels stay right in the bowl. So they're not uh, going flying everywhere as I cut them off, um, which can be kind of a pain. So this is just a nice, easy way to uh, remove those kernels and make sure they all stay in one place. And as I'm cutting this, I can see there's some um, corn juice or corn milk we might call it that's sort of spraying off the cob that's telling us that our corn is super fresh and super sweet you might even consider running the back of your knife along the um, cob here and all of that that's coming off that is so sweet and delicious so it's a great kind of extra addition that we can add to our recipe right here getting all the benefits from that sweet corn so that's one of our cobs. I'm gonna do two cobs co total. So I already uh, cut the kernels off of this cob over here. So I'll put that there. The next thing I'll work on is our jalapeno pepper. So this is gonna have a little bit of um, heat in our recipe. But when I'm working with a jalapeno, what I like to do is first uh, just cut off the top there because we're not gonna eat that part. And then I cut it in half. And you might recall from our other lessons that the spiciness in all of our hot peppers lives in the seeds and the membrane in there. So you have two options. You could um, cut everything up together 
and include those seeds and membrane and then you'd have um, a pretty spicy dish. Or if you're like me and you can't really handle a lot of spice, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove that interior part right there. So I'm just carefully uh, running my knife through along the membrane and the seeds to help loosen them and remove them. And I try to touch as, as little of it as possible just because the residue um, the part that makes the pepper spicy does linger on your fingers and hands for quite a while. So if you go to touch another part of your body that's sensitive, like your eyes, um, especially if you're someone like me who wears contacts, it's not gonna feel good. So try not to touch that too much. And then I'm simply gonna run my knife to create these really thin strips. And then I'll go back in the other direction and we'll cut it into even smaller pieces. So this is how I find it to be the fastest way to uh, get everything into really small pieces there. If you don't have a jalapeno, you know there's lots of spicy peppers out there. You might enjoy using a serrano or something else that you have on hand, or you could just use um, some crushed red pepper flakes. So I'll just get that into even smaller pieces. And then when I'm pleased with the size, I have a little bowl here that I've already used for two cloves of garlic that I've minced up to the same size. We're gonna add these at the same time, so I'll put it all into one bowl. And then the last thing we need is uh, some garnishes that we'll use at the end of our recipe. So I'm gonna use some uh, beautiful scallions that we have here. The scallions, a whole bunch of them are selling just for a dollar at our grocers here. So really wonderful way to add some freshness at the end of our recipe. Um, it's always nice to have something that's uh, raw, that's not cooked, to have a sort of a garnish. It'll just add some crunchiness. We'll get that nice onion flavor. And uh, they'll stay bright green, so it will be pretty to look at too, which is always nice when we're cooking. So I'm using basically the entire scallion here. And if you wanted to use a regular onion and add that at the beginning of, our, of your recipe while you're cooking, you could do that as well. Scallions are, are optional. And then finally, some fresh herbs. As always, we're always using tons of fresh herbs in our kitchen. They're all uh, a dollar a bunch here at the market. I'm probably using only a quarter or a fifth of this whole cilantro bunch. And uh, again, just another way to add tons of flavor. And I love the combination of corn and cilantro. We're gonna add some soy sauce to this as well. And I really like all of those flavors all together at once. Again, totally substitute with whatever you have on hand. Basil is another one that I really like in this recipe. Even just parsley would be nice. Um, just again, adding a little bit of freshness at the end of our recipe. So we're over here on our stove. I have a, a frying pan or saute pan, one of my larger ones, so whatever you have on hand. And I have it heating right now over about a, a medium heat. And I have all my ingredients that we just chopped up right next to me here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some olive oil to our pan. So this is gonna be just enough oil um, to coat the bottom of our pan, nothing too crazy. Olive oil is our oil of choice here when we're cooking at Essex, but use whatever you have and enjoy on hand. So I can test to see if my pan is hot enough by taking a little bit of something that is gonna go in. I'm gonna choose just a tiny piece of jalapeno. And it's very slight, but you can see it starting to sizzle. And that's telling us that the pan is hot enough and ready to go. So I'm gonna add that chopped jalapeno and garlic that we cut up. And this is just gonna take a second because I don't want it to burn. I just want it to start flavoring our oil. And right away, 
I can see it popping up. <laughs> right away, I'm gonna add our green beans because adding something else to our pan is gonna prevent that very tiny chopped up uh, jalapeno and garlic from burning. So now that we have some more stuff in the pan, I can increase the heat just a little bit, about to a medium high. And we're coating the green beans in all of that delicious oil that's now been infused with the garlic and jalapeno flavors. If you decide to use red pepper flakes, add them right at the beginning with your chopped up garlic because uh, you know, they're dried red pepper flakes, and so having the oil, the hot oil, touch them, that's what's going to release their flavor again. So it's always a good idea to add your spices directly to hot oil, not to anything that's gotten too liquidy, because that hot oil is going to release all of their flavor. And I'm not adding any salt to our recipe at this time, because we're going to add soy sauce. And soy sauce, even the low sodium kind, is always gonna be high in sodium, in salt. And so we wanna be really careful with how much sodium we're adding to our recipes. Of course, too much sodium can lead to things like high blood pressure and hypertension. So especially as we get older, when those conditions become more serious, we're always making sure that our recipes are low in sodium. And our recipes are gonna be naturally, naturally low in sodium because we're using so many fresh ingredients. And that's why we go for things like garlic and fresh herbs and onions because they're adding that flavor without the sodium. And if I look at my um, soy sauce here, one tablespoon of this low sodium soy sauce has 24% of all of the sodium that we would want to eat in one day. So I'll say that again. One tablespoon of our low sodium soy sauce has 24% of all the sodium we would want to have in one day. So even though it's the low sodium version, it's still quite a lot. Now we're going to have about four servings in this recipe. So 24 divided by 4, 6% is not too much, but that's exactly the reason why we're not going to add any other extra salt to our recipe here. So always take a look at that label and make sure you're choosing low sodium foods. And so now I'm going to go ahead and add my corn. The corn is so sweet and tender when you buy it in the summertime that it doesn't need to cook for nearly as long as our green beans. And I just, this recipe is one of those summer things that makes me so happy because the colors of the green and the bright yellow, I think just are really pleasing to look at. And I can smell the sugar from the corn is just coming up as it's cooking. It smells incredible in here. So let's just talk about how we could turn this into more of a complete meal. So I put corn in the grains group. So even though our corn is of course a vegetable, it is much higher in starch than many of our other vegetables. It has a, a starch amount or a ca carbohydrate amount that's really similar to things like rice and bread. So for that reason, we're considering corn a grain, meaning our recipe here has grains and vegetables. So in order to make it a complete meal, I would want to add some protein. So what are some examples of protein that could be good with this? I personally just simply fry up some tofu and have it uh, all together like that. I also uh, cook up some chicken breast. and. Finally, this is gonna make a little bit of sauce once we add our soy sauce. So you could also put this alongside or uh, lay a piece of white fish over it. That would be really nice as well. So again, always looking for those ways to get a complete meal, which should have a fruit or a vegetable, a grain, and a protein. 
So always try to keep that in mind when you're building your meals. All right, so now that our corn has softened up a little bit, that's when I'm gonna add my soy sauce. I'm gonna do one tablespoon of soy sauce here. It's gonna sizzle a little bit. Nice. Yum, I'm smelling that beautiful aroma of the soy sauce coming up as well. Ooh, some of our green beans have gotten a little bit blistered, so they're a little bit brown, which is um, really how I personally love to eat green beans. And then this is optional, but if you wanna balance out your flavors a little bit more, also if you find that the corn you got wasn't particularly sweet, you could do a small amount of honey. I'm just gonna do the tiniest drizzle because it also adds kind of this nice um, caramelization to our recipe, but this is completely optional. If you're really um, conscious about the sugar you consume, just leave that out. All right, yum. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and I'm gonna add those garnishes that we worked on. So first I'm gonna add the scallions because I want those to not get soft, but just get a little bit warm from uh, the heat of the rest of our ingredients. All right, and then finally, we'll go ahead and sprinkle that lovely cilantro that we cut up as well. And this is gonna get a little bit cooked, so it's gonna release the flavors of that herb. And there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you what it cost me to make this recipe. Let me get my chart. So all in all, it cost me $8.68 to buy all of our ingredients. This serves about four people or four portions. And so that's just two seventeen dollars per portion. So a pretty affordable recipe right here. So thanks for joining us today, guys. I hope you get the chance to make this recipe at home and I'll see you next time.